Now. The Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unusual, and the unknown. Come with me, my friends. We shall descend to the world of the unknown and forbidden, down to the depths to the veil of time is lifted, and the supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of the idol of Brom Rock. Crom Cross, a huge golden idol surrounded by the Council of Twelve. Crom Cross, to whom human sacrifice was made. Crom Cross, a name stretching back into the misty and half forgotten years of the past, back to the time of the Druids, Caesar, and the Roman invasion of England, back in time where history becomes vague and guesses. Yet through those years, from the mists of ancient remembrance to the modern world of today, there echoes the name of... Ram-Ram. I'd gone up with Matt and Susan Stevens to the hunting and fishing lodge they had in the Appalachians. It was the end of April and he went to straighten up the lodge, lay in a supply of provisions for the coming spring and summer. The second night you were there, one of those sudden spring storms... Glad we're inside. It's a big spot out there in that storm. More coffee, Mark? Oh, I've had four cups already. When you get married, you'll be a lucky man, Jack. Isn't every woman that can brew coffee the way my sister can. I realize that. What about you, Jack? Any more coffee? No. I... Uh, but I heard something. Like what? I don't know. I didn't hear anything. Well, it must have been the wind. It won't be long before the fishing season opens. I hardly wait to get up here with my rod and reel. We've laid in a fairly large supply of food. The only things we'll need to pick up are eggs and bread and... Oh, listen. Oh, I heard it, too. Someone's calling for help. Come on. We'll slip our slickers on. Yeah. You better keep the coffee hot, Sue. We may be bringing someone back with us. All right. All right. Let's go. All right. Oh, that's a rotten night. I wonder who that is out there. Well, someone who got lost. We'd better call to him. Maybe he can hear us. Hello? with this storm. Where are you? By the lake. Could ask which one, but I'm afraid he wouldn't understand. Let's try our lake. Right. We're coming for you. I don't mind looking for someone who's lost. If they just wouldn't get themselves lost on a rainy night. I hope he's just lost. What do you mean? But I hope it's nothing more than that. Oh, it won't be. So try calling him again. All right. Hello? Right up ahead. Pretty close. Hey, look down there. Someone lying on the ground. Oh, when the lightning flash goes out. Come on. Yeah. Watch your step. Don't worry. Yeah. There he is. Are you all right? What's the matter with you? Why doesn't he answer? He can't. I just felt his pulse. He's dead. Gavin, it's pretty heavy and pouring rain made it extremely difficult to keep our footing as we struggled up against the storm. He actually hadn't been far away than a thousand feet, but it took us almost a half an hour to get him back up the smoke to the lodge. Open up, Sue! Oh, you found him. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we'd better set him down on the cot in my room. Right. Well, what's the matter with him? Uh, all right. Uh, set him down. Okay. Uh, did he pass out? No. Well, then... He's dead. What are you going to do with him? Just a minute. Look at the clothes he's wearing. Oh, I don't see. Looks like he was going to a costume ball. It looks like he came over on the Mayflower. The clothes he's wearing went out of style hundreds of years ago. But what would a man be doing out in a storm in clothes like those? I don't know. Oh, oh what was that? He had something in his hand. Oh. Looks like a little statue of some kind. Look at it. It's 
Carlo. There's a piece of paper inside. Oh, no, let's see what it says. What does it say, Jack? It's a, it's a map of some kind. There's a line drawn on it. And it's right here. Look, that little irregular circle down there, that looks like Mirror Lake, where we found it. It's not called Mirror Lake in this map. It says Old Beltane. It's written in Old English. Old English? That's right. Ever read the Canterbury Tales? Notice the spelling on this map. It's the same. Well, you're right. Trail on the map. He must have been following it. If that's Mirror Lake, then he came over the mountains right here. Yeah, but there's no path through the mountains at that point. Well, this map says there is. He was following it. You know, we better follow the trail of the map. We can see let them know what happened. They can come back and get it. It doesn't seem to be too far. I don't think it is. What about it? I guess we might as well. Soon? I guess so. We'll leave them here, and we can bring them back, and they can take him back with us. What was that? I don't know. Hey, something's opened the door. What's the matter? Oh, look. Up there by the trees. It's an old woman. Closed door in black. From the Golden Age of Radio Theater, you're listening to The Hall of Fantasy. We'll continue in just a moment. The Areva Rainbow Showroom presents the hilarious comedy of Pat Cooper on Friday, September 13th. Truly one of the finest comedians of our time. You're guaranteed to laugh from the beginning of this show to the end. Pasquale Caputo, known as Pat Cooper, was a favorite opening act for Frank Sinatra in Las Vegas and concert halls all across the country. Now he performs regularly in Atlantic City and Las Vegas to sold-out audiences as well as major theaters. In the past year, Pat has appeared on top television shows including Seinfeld, Letterman, Reed and Kathy Lee, Howard Stern, and many more. Pat Cooper's long-awaited return to Arriva will bring people from everywhere to see him, so don't miss this show. Enjoy all the great dinner shows coming to Arriva. L'Oreal, Pat Cooper, Sam Butera, The Stan Ketton Tribute, Dick Contino, The Gaylords, and Soupy Sales too. Seating is limited. Call Arriva at 810-573-8100 for reservations. Arriva, located on 12 Mile Road, west of Van Dyke. When you open a window, it should stay open. And when your windows are closed, you shouldn't feel a draft. If your windows leak, stick, or just look bad, it's time to replace them. Time to call Century 21 Home Improvements at 1-800-633-2222. Call now and save 10% up to $750 on premium custom-fit windows. That's Century 21 Home Improvements, America's most experienced home improvements business. For replacement windows, they will always open and easy to clean with a custom fit that means no more drafts. Call 1-800-633-2222 for a free in-home estimate. Call now and you'll save 10% up to $750. Not available in all areas, the offer ends September 30th. Sold, furnished, and installed by American Remodeling Incorporated, an independently owned and operated contractor. Not valid on prior sales or with any other offer. Need new windows? Call Century 21 Home Improvements now at 1-800-633-2222. That number again is 1-800-633-2222. U.S. offer only. And now, back to the Hall of Fantasy. The dead man we had brought back to the cabin with us had held a small statuette in his hand. It had fallen to the floor, and inside it we found a strange map with a trail outlined on it. We decided to follow that trail to reach his people and let them know what had happened to them. Suddenly the door had blown open and Susan screamed. An old woman, and she's pointing at us. I don't see anything, Sue. How do I? I was sure I'd seen something. Close the door, Jack. Right. Now, there's nothing out there, Sue. Nothing at all. Maybe not, but what about that strange wailing cry we heard? I'll admit I heard something, but what it was, I don't know. Probably an animal frightened of the storm. I'm not so sure. Don't worry about it, Sue. Well, we might as well turn in now. We're going to hit the trail early tomorrow. We turned in for the night. Several times I lay there in my cot, I thought I heard a strange wailing cry. But I put that down to my imagination. And for some reason, I was afraid. I fell off to sleep about one o'clock. Sometime during the night, the skies cleared and the storm was over. We got up at six, and by seven o'clock, we'd scut it out on the trail. For a while, it was easy going, but about nine in the morning, we hit a stretch that was very difficult for us to follow. Yeah. Yeah. Be very careful. One misstep, and that'll be the last one you take. We're up pretty high. 
I've never been up here before. Have you met? No. I don't think anyone has. Why did you both bring guns? Can't tell what we might meet up here. The map's been pretty accurate, Jack. Every lake, every stream, even where the trail gets rough. That's right. The twin peaks are right in front of us. Yes, but I see. I can't see any way to get through. Well, according to the map, there's a narrow passage between the peaks. Oh, I hope it's right. It's been right so far. But watch your step. Don't worry. I will. In a short while, we came to a clearly defined trail. The terrain over which we just passed seemed almost a barrier so that no one could get in or out except with great danger. We came at last to a solid wall of rock a thousand feet above us towered the twin peaks. Any way of going any farther? Uh, nothing but solid rock up ahead. Hey, wait a What do you see? Come on. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think I see an opening. Matt, you were right. There is an opening just large enough for a man to walk through. According to the map, the trail ends behind those peaks. I wonder what we'll find there. Well, no, but we won't find anything unless we start through. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Because the wind is rushing through here. You two had better concentrate on getting through. It gets narrower up ahead. The passage between the rocks is twisted and turned. Some places so narrow that we had to lift the trees ourselves through. Several times we thought we'd have to turn back. The obstacle was overcome and we pushed ahead. There was a wind always howling about us. Look! It's widening. Just another few feet to go. Yeah. There's the end of it. Come on. I hope we find his relatives. It's going to be a hard trip back. Look. Oh, oh a hidden valley. Surrounded on all sides by the mountains. There we go. It must be the only way in. Well, I, I see some houses down there. Matt. Look at them again. Why? You don't build houses like that nowadays. I almost think I was in old England. Look. Where? Oh, there. That man is coming, and, and he's dressed just like the other one was. He seems friendly. From where did he come? Uh, from outside. From the other side of the peaks. Uh, the truth, he come from the outside, then. Uh, uh, how did he find this place? We had a map. One of your people we found him last night during the storm. He was dead. He did not have to come to tell us. Crom Crock? Crom Crock? I... I shall take you to him. The man led us down the slope onto the valley floor. We followed him, and he seemed friendly enough, talking always in that queer, antiquated way of his. I noticed as we walked that others followed him. They said nothing, trailing us out of it, and I got the crazy idea that we were prisoners. He led us away from the houses into an area thick with oak trees, finally taking us into a clearing surrounded completely by those giant oaks. Up there. Yes, I see them. Thirteen giant statues, just like the small one the dead man had in his hand. Twelve stone, and one in the center is gold. Why don't those people say something? They shall stand there and watch them. But, but that statue in the center, the gold one, you don't want them to be alive. It's like it's watching us. Like that, but no one wears clothes like that now. Druid. What was that? Of course. Druids. Don't you remember your history, Matt? You should have known. No, what? Listen to me. You saw the oak tree surrounding this place. And you can see the twelve statues and the gold one in the center. That's the Council of Twelve, and the gold statue is Crom Croc. We stumbled on something out of the pages of history. Oh. I've heard that before. Of course you have. Caesar's legions found them when they first invaded England. The worship of Crom Croc was forbidden, just as the worship of Sybil, the Magna Mata, was forbidden. But the Druidic priest kept the belief alive. And then, in 1641, all traces of the Druids disappeared from England. Well, what happened to them? Well, according to the evidence, an unknown ship left England in May of that year. They were ostensibly bound for the same area where the Mayflower colonists landed. But it never reached here. Or so they thought. But they must have reached here, found this hidden valley, and kept their people and beliefs alive. These must be their descendants. The day, the day they sacrificed the 
Ireland suffering is the crown crime. What? That's right. In some parts of Ireland, the Scottish Highlands, and in Brittany, the day is still celebrated. Not with human sacrifice as it used to be, but with token sacrifice. Human sacrifice? That's right. Wait a minute. Look. There's a man in a white robe. He's raising his arms. the golden age of radio theater, you're listening to the Hall of Fantasy. We'll continue in just a moment. If Wall Street's got you blue, you need to hide your blue. Barbecue is what I like. Barbecues are out of sight. One rib, two rib, three rib, five. Baked beans, fruit, punch, blueberry pie. One thing, two things, we know this. My favorite church, a big old mess. Red, black, soft, yeah. has a unique activated bleaching system that removes many tough stains better than other leading regular detergents. Plus, Tiger Blues Ultra 2 helps keep colors bright. Don't let the water stay blue, make you run and hide. You have to be clean. You have to be tight. Use Tiger Bleach and wash away the wash stay blue. And now, back to the Hall of Fantasy. We'd followed the trail on the map and had come through a narrow path between the mountains to discover a valley hidden from the world for over 350 years. A valley where modern civilization had not made any inroads. A people who held to the customs and strange beliefs of their forebears. Now we stood before the shrine of the Druids. Before the stone council of twelve and the grinning golden idol of Kram Krak. <laughs> Tonight they intend to sacrifice us. To offer us a sacrifice to the idol of Crom Croc. Are you serious? Of course I am. What are we going to do? We have our gun. We wouldn't stand a chance with them right now. Too many people here. We'll have to wait till later when so many of them aren't around. Then we can make our move. But what are they going to do with us now? Well, let's wait and see. Through, Chet? Yes, and, and their leader is coming toward us. Yes, baby. We found one of your people outside, beyond the mountains. We wanted to tell you that he was dead. The hag of Beltane followed him. A spectral woman clothed in the garb of black. She rode upon his shoulders and stuck him down. The old woman I saw last night, remember? Your eyes perceived the hag of Beltane. I, I saw someone last night, an old woman. And did she hear a wailing sound? Yes, we did. Then she has her crown crop well. For she destroyed a traitor who was afraid to feed the hunger of crown crop. And she sent back three to take his place. I, crown crop will be joyful tonight. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Surely you must know that he has been chosen to be sacrificed to crown crop. And before the Council of Twelve, he should be happy strangers. Tonight, when the moon is full and high in the sky of the king, then shall ye meet Crumb Crop and satisfy his hunger with your blood. The leader raised his arm, and in an instant we were surrounded by these strange people. They led us to a structure directly behind the golden idol of Crumb Crop. It was surrounded by a half circle of trees, giant oaks. A half circle such as the twelve stone idols made, fanning out on either side of Crom Cross. They secured the doors and put a guard outside, lest we should try to escape. What are we going to do? There's nothing we can do right now. We'll have to wait. Oh, we still have our guns and ammunition. How much ammunition did you bring? A couple of boxes. You? We're about the same. Jack, how much do you know about the Druids? Well, just a little. What about the ceremonial sacrifice? Are they... They built a fire tonight, a colossal fire. They call it the Beltane Fire. Then what happens? They expect us to run through it. 
the sacrificial altars on the other side just before the golden idol of Crom Croft. They think the fire purifies us, makes us fit to be sacrificed to Crom Croft. How horrible. Our only chance is in trying to escape. Yes, but how? Fire. The Beltane fire. What? What? I have an idea that they let us escape. At any rate, it's worth trying. If it works, we'll live. If it doesn't, uh, that won't make any difference to us after we're dead. I outlined my plan to Matthew Susan. They wouldn't make any move to escape until we stood before the Beltane fire. Then we'd make the move and hope that we succeeded. They kept us there without any food or water. As the sun settled down behind the western peaks and the darkening blue filtered through the sky, there had a great deal of activity outside. As the evening arrived, the drums began. They'll be coming for us soon now. Here. Hold these in your hands. Oh, I hope this works. I smell smoke. It kindled the fire, then. Hey! Don't fight them! Don't fight them! Don't be fighters! We're ready! this hunting lodge, but I'm going to sell it. I don't want to be anywhere near what I saw today. Strange, isn't it? Well, he's 2,000 years old, and older, undoubtedly. The belief of the druids and the magical properties of the oak tree, and the strange ceremony of the Beltane fire, still believes in many parts of the world. The ceremonies can change the course, but they still make offerings to crime crop. Characters and events portrayed in these programs are fictional, and any similarity to actual events or persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Stay tuned for a word about our next Golden Age of Radio Theater coming up. This is. Stay tuned. Spooky Ventures is the home for spooky content and spooky merchandise on the web. Check it out today at SpookyVentures.com. And remember, always keep it spooky.